In 1978, at Boeing Aircraft in Seattle, engineers were designing experimental aircraft. Exotic things with two wings or two tails or two fuselages and just weird stuff, because who knows, it might work. A young computer scientist named Lauren Carpenter was helping them visualize what the planes might look like in flight. I would get the data from them and make pictures uh, from various angles, but I wanted to be able to put a mountain behind them because every B Boeing publicity photo in existence has a mountain behind it. But there was no way to do mountains. Mountains had millions and millions of little triangles and polygons or whatever you want to call it, and uh, we had enough trouble with 100, especially in those days when our machines were uh, slower than the ones you have in your watch. Carpenter didn't want to make just any mountains. He wanted to create a landscape the planes could fly through. But there was no way to do that with existing animation techniques. Lauren Carpenter stumbled across the work of a little-known mathematician named Benoit Mandelbrot. In 1978, I ran into this book in a bookstore, Fractals, Form, Chance, and Dimension by Benoit Mandelbrot, and it has to do with the fractal geometry of nature. So I bought the book and took it home and read it, cover to cover, every last little word, including footnotes and references, twice. In his book, Mandelbrot said that many forms in nature can be described mathematically as fractals, a word he invented to define shapes that look jagged and broken. He said that you can create a fractal by taking a smooth-looking shape and breaking it into pieces over and over again. Carpenter decided he'd try doing that on his computer. Within three days, I was producing pictures of mountains on my computer at work. The method is, is dead simple. You start with a landscape made out of very rough triangles, big ones. And then for each triangle, break it into, into four triangles. And then do that again, and again, and again, and again, and again. The pictures were stunning. They were just totally stunning. No one has ever seen anything like this. And I just opened a whole new door to the new world of making pictures. And it got the computer uh, graphics community excited about fractals because suddenly they were easy to do. And so people started doing them all over the place. So around the end of the, the end of the seventies, um, maybe seventy nine, um, he started putting together a group of um, computer graphics wizards, and started the Lucasfilm Computer Division. Um, and one of the guys he hired, um, or was hired, was a guy named Lauren Carpenter, and Lauren was a wizard in the area of fractals. But what Lauren did in 1980 was he heard that George Lucas put together this new group. And he decided he wanted to work there. At the time, he was working for Boeing aircraft, a maker of Boeing um, airplanes up in Seattle. And he realized that just sending a resume saying, hey, I want to work with you guys, wasn't going to do it. So he spent four months um, taking his algorithms to do fractals and turn them into a two-minute movie where you can actually fly through this landscape as if you were in an airplane. This is the first time that was ever done. Um, he finished it just in time for SIGGRAPH, which is the um, annual large computer graphics conference held in the States. And um, the two, two founders of the computer division, um, Ed Catmull and Alby Ray Smith, happened to be sitting in the front row. They, after it was over, everyone stood on their, on their feet, applauded, the crowd went wild, and Ed and, and Alby offered Lauren a job right on the spot. So he got to work there. And they put this to use in the Genesis effect on um, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan in 1982. So meanwhile, um, I should say Lucas, Lucasfilm was based in Marin County, which is just north of San Francisco. Atari, um, which everyone here has probably heard of, it was based in um, Silicon Valley or Sunnyvale area, which is south of San Francisco. Atari and Lucasfilm got together. Atari 
wanted some of Lucasfilm's um, star appeal, I guess, and offered a deal. So the Lucasfilm Games Group was, was born. Spring of 1982, Atari paid Lucasfilm a million dollars to launch this new group. Um, the new group would create games for the Atari game systems. Atari would get the first right of refusal for any game. Any game that we made, um, Atari would get, to, would get offered it first. If they didn't want to do it, then it would go to some other publisher. And that the new group would be part of the Lucasfilm computer division. So this is the um, original group. Um, I'd say six months after we started, this, this is the team. Um, Charlie Kellner, um, who was one of the original Apple, Apple computer employees. Dave Levine, who um, started about a month after me, was known for Ball Blazer. Um, this is Peter Langston, who was the head of the group. That's me. Lauren Carpenter, who really wasn't in the group, but I'll go, in this, go into this in a moment. He was kind of loaned to us. And Gary Winnick, who was our artist. And fortunately, for the first few months I was there, they didn't have our, our building ready, so I got to be Lauren's office mate. The plan was to build two throwaway games. Um, none of us had ever really done a commercial game before. We were all, uh, Peter was a research scientist. Um, Dave Levine, it comes straight out of college. I think he did do some, some work on some multiplayer games. I did a couple of mostly game conversions. So by saying they're throwaway games, that made it a little bit safer because then we could work on them, and if they weren't great, we didn't think, you know, no one would force us to put them out in the marketplace. So if they're any good, we'll publish them. Otherwise, it was a good learning experience to get going, get our tools in, in place. So my game was going to be kind of a Star Raiders on a planet. Star Raiders, for those of you who know, the old original Atari games was basically a point of view space game where you see star fields coming towards you. I wanted a landscape. Um, it was going to be Star Wars-like, but it couldn't be Star Wars. In fact, um, for, the, for the entire time I was there, we were not allowed to do Star Wars games. They had Parker Brothers and Atari and all these other companies doing their games for Star Wars Universe, and we got to, we were asked to do original content. And, and so the question I asked Lauren was, would it be possible for Factos to be implemented on a microcomputer? And at first he said, well, I don't know if we could do that. Came back the next day and said, well, yeah, I think it might be possible. Um, so we, we ended up doing was loaning him an Atari 800. He took it home, learned a 6502 semi-language in a couple of days. A couple of days later, he got um, a 3D landscape and fractals up on the, on the computer. A few more days, he had, he had to fly through it. And anyway, he, he was able to do it and with a pretty good frame rate at the time of like maybe seven or eight frames per second. Welcome to Lucasfilm. For the sake of security, we can't tell you exactly where we are, but I can tell you that this is where programmers have virtually free hands in employing state-of-the-art technology in video game design. Rescue on Fractalus is one of the first two games from the movie company. The player sees his or her point of view and a world where space, form, mass, and velocity are true to life. This is accomplished in part by use of a geometrical formula called the fractal. And what the fractals do is it takes the altitude at various points on the terrain, and then it uses a repeatable technique for randomly generating the cragginess or, or rocky edges that, that connect these points of altitude. Artist Gary Winnick designed the amusing and surprising creatures in the game. Uh, we didn't have a marketing organization breathing down our necks saying, you have to get this done in three weeks or something. And rather than worrying about that part, we were just told, do the best you can do, do something which is new, which really um, pushes the art of video games and video technology as far as you can make it. Listen up. 
You all know where we stand. The guys in the Ether Corps may be holding back those stinking jaggies, but we lost a lot of good space pilots. Blown to bits in the void. The rest are crashing down on the surface of Fractalus, and that's where you come in. We need you to rescue those pilots on Fractalus. Okay, so the Ether Corps turned their thumbs down on you guys when they recruited those spacers. Well, look here, air jocks. They need us now, and they need us bad. Yeah, now they need us. Now, this mothership's bound toward booster range of Fractalus. Down there is where it gets sticky. The Jaggies have packed the planet with remote control weaponry and suicide saucers. There may even be troops. That's all we know. Now, suit up. You're the only ones who can pull this off. Some of those pilots have been down there a long time. Thumbs up, Fly Guys. Go on out and get us a future. Fox leader to command. Standing by to launch. Initiate main engine sequence. Engines engaged, sir. Now entering launch tube. Confirming, Commander, that there's a belly full of defensive mega ether bombs on board this old Valkyrie fighter. Negative, Fox leader. Had to make room so you guys could pick up pilots. Nearly stripped it down the mirror nuts and titanium bolts. I'm hitting atmosphere, and now you tell me? How in the hell do you expect cool me to get your this? your heels, Ace Case. We've left your antimatter bubble torpedoes, but that's it, the weapons department. You and your AMBs against the Jaggies. Blasting away, Commander. And for God's sake, watch your energy level or you lose your shields. That's your only defense. Holy mothership! You're a real prince, Commander. Rescue on Fractalus. A dangerous mission behind jaggy lines. You join the elite rescue squadron and pilot your Valkyrie fighter through the craggy landscape of Fractalus. Explore every peak and valley, every canyon searching for stranded space pilots, testing your skill against the dreaded Jaggies, who have invaded our sector of the galaxy. Land your fighter on Fractalus just long enough to rescue those Ether Corps pilots from the planet's treacherous and hostile atmosphere. Pilots in range. He's on the approach, and Commander, he looks beat. Oh, he's pounding on the rear airlocks. Well, get him open, kid. Airlocks open. Phew, am I glad to see you. I knew you guys could bail us out. Welcome aboard, Ace. Rescue on Fractalus adapts the sophisticated techniques of fractal mathematics to the world of the microcomputer. The result, a realistic first-person flight through a three-dimensional landscape. The mountains are computed and drawn in real time, allowing for infinitely varied landscapes every time you play. And in the world of Fractalus, if you have to turn around and fly back over an area, the same peaks and valleys are still there, and so are the dreaded jaggies.